Uh, I hope so. Well, I think that my work showed that there are several indicators that can help us to understand what humans did in the tropics. And I think that will especially motivate people to look for uh, human activity in those areas. So I hope that more people will go and work there and using those new techniques that we have now in hand. So I think the number is really increasing in the last um, decades because we have new technique to actually look at record of human activity, which is not visible to the naked eye. So I think that actually motivated much more and we see a, a, lo a lot of new projects coming and looking on the, um, on the tropics. And I think if, let's say, a decade or two ago, um, the tropics seemed as a barrier for human um, human activity and for human dispersal, uh, I think today we understand that they were a very important resource uh, in human uh, prehistory and through the human history as well. Um, and much more people are going and working there and we see new projects every day now, uh, applying new technique. And I think the information that is coming out is really exciting. Uh, so it's challenging as every archaeological um, excavation, but of course uh, the logistics are sometimes a bit more difficult going into tropical forests. Identifying sites is a bit more difficult and then the analysis should take into account new methods because again the preservation is relatively to other areas is pretty bad. Um, and w we know much little if you compare that to the archaeology of, of Europe or, or the Near East or, in, or even in, in South Africa or East Africa where we know much more, we know much less about the tropics. So going there and working there is a bit harder, but on the other hand, I think uh, the outcomes that we see that are coming in the last years are uh, encouraging much more people to actually go and, and develop this research. So of course the um, the resources are are very different, and for example, if if we look on a much um, colder environment where you, or a drier environment where you don't have much wood, then people if they will build with wood, for example, they will take the wood with them. But for example, with the people that I worked with um, in tropical forest. Uh, when I ask them, okay, so would you take the remains of those houses once you live? And they were looking and saying like, there will always be more bamboo in the forest. We don't really need that. So, they, uh, uh, so in fact, the availability of resource for them is, is huge. There is al always there will be more food in the forest. There will always be more resource for, you know, so they can just go and forage in the forest and just cut a bamboo, make some vessels, eat there, cooking in with the bamboo and just leave it there, there will always be more. The uh, uh, food supply is much greater. Uh, the animal diversity is really big. So in terms of human activity, it seems that if we thought that you know living in the jungle would be very hard, it seems that actually is, is not that hard as it is, for example, in drier uh, uh, an environment. And from the people perspective, they are living in, in, a, in a world that is very uh, affluent in that sense. Um, so of course, um, th that will change. And also the availability of, of this kind of material means that it's more degradable. So as archaeologists, our ability to detect tools that are made from bamboo, for example, is much harder than detecting tools made of stone. So that so people can make very sophisticated things, but for us as archaeologists, we can s be left with nothing. So we should be very careful with assuming that if we don't see something, it means people did not use it. So it is sometimes in the tropics, it's more the absence of the evidence than actual an evidence for absence. So it's not that people were not sophisticated as other people, it's that the uh, formation process of the archaeological record and the preservation does not allow that for us as archaeologists to actually observe that. And this is where the new techniques come in to actually trace those traces which are invisible just to the naked eye. <laughs>